find the roots of this function. In other words, find all the x values that satisfy this equation, that produce a y value of 0. Hmm. That's a little puzzling, isn't it? I know it's a nice cubic, nice polynomial, so it has to have three roots. They don't all have to be real, they don't all have to be different, but I know it's going to have three roots. I would normally think about factoring here, but uh, yeah, I don't really see any obvious way to get factoring, although you can do some just kind of guess and check factoring, uh, and you might be successful. So I uh, encourage you to try that. But there is a method that is handy, and it kind of makes sense. It basically is just, if you can just think your way through and find one solution, then you can use that solution to find a factor, use polynomial long division, find the other factor, and then you'll have more success solving. Okay. So I could try to just look at this and try to just think of some numbers that might work, that might make this zero. But gosh, there are a lot of numbers in the world. So it'd be cool if I could kind of hone in on a list of possible roots, possible x values that would make this true. And to do that, we're going to use a cool little trick. And to demonstrate that trick, I'm going to give you another example. Let's say we're solving, I'm just making up a totally unrelated equation. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. OK? That one I think we can factor. Right? We would just set up our sets of parentheses. We'd say these terms here multiply to equal 3x squared. These two multiply to equal 2. I think a 2 is going to go there. Oh, no. I think the 2 is going to go here, and the 1 is going to be here because they both have to be negative. Right? The negative 3x minus 2x gives me my negative, two, uh, negative 5x. And then I have 3x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. And I get my two solutions. Now, if you notice, both of my solutions are factors of my last term divided by factors of my first term. My solution of 1 is a factor of 2, which is 1, divided by a factor of 3, which is also 1. My solution 2 thirds is a factor of 2, negative 2, right? Or, or divided by, sorry, 2, <laughs> divided by a factor of 3, 3, 2 thirds. So, if you think about it, if your roots are rational, and that's a big if, if you have rational roots, then they have to be factors of your last term divided by factors of your first term. And by term, I really am saying the coefficient of the first term. So. If I want to find a list of possible rational roots for this equation, my list is going to be factors of my last term divided by factors of my first term. Term. And again, I really mean the coefficient of the first term. So I, I'm going to have a long list here. So factors of negative 6, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, divided by factors of 
my first term, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Unfortunately for us, this gives us tons of options. So let's just list here. So I could have, uh, let's see, plus or minus 1 divided by 1, that's 1. Plus or minus 1 divided by 2, that's 1 half. Plus or minus 1 divided by 4, 1 fourth. Plus or minus 2 divided by 1, that's 2. Plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 2, that's 1, we already have that. Plus or minus 2 over plus or minus 4, that's plus or minus 1 half, we already have that. Let's see, plus or minus 3 over 1, which gives me plus or minus 3. Plus or minus 3 over 2. Plus or minus 3 over 4. You see where I'm going with this? Plus or minus 6 over 1. Plus or minus 6 over 2, which is plus or minus 3, which we have. Plus or minus 6 over plus or minus 4, we already have that. Holy smokes, that's a lot of possible roots. These are all the possible rational roots of this. There's no way to have a rational root of this that's not on this list. That is a very sloppily drawn list. But I was so enthusiastic about it. Are, are we getting the idea? I can already hear you just going, oh my god. Don't worry about this. You don't have to go through and make this whole list. I just did this so you would see what I'm doing. But what you do want to do is think about this and just try some of these numbers and see if you're lucky. Now, I always start with the nice ones, plus or minus 1. See if it works. I'm going to avoid fractions for a while because I don't have a calculator handy. Maybe I'll try plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. What we're going to do is we're going to put all of these possible roots in and see if I get a winner. In other words, if I get zero. So let's try x equals 1. I think you can quickly see this is not going to work. Does that equal 0? 4 minus 13? No. There's no way that's going to work. How about a negative 1? Is that going to work? Let's see. Uh, let's see, that's going to be negative 4 plus 13. Oh, so close, but no. Hmm. Let's see, wasn't 2 and negative 2 on my list? Let's try x equals 2. So 4 times 2 cubed, uh, minus 13 times 2, minus 6. Does that equal 0? That reminds me of, are you my mother? Let's see, 32 minus 26, minus 6, 32, minus 26, oh, 32 minus 26 is 6, minus 6 is 0. Yes, I say, yes, we have found a root. I found a root. If I have found a root, I have found a factor. If I have found a factor, <laughs> I can find another factor. So. I have found a root, and if the root is 2, then that came from a factor of x minus 2. All I have to do now is find the other factor. Now, at this point, you can kind of just do some educated guessing and checking. Go for it. You might be successful finding that other factor. But if you want to do a more systematic approach, you can do polynomial, long division. Everybody's favorite. So, let's do it. So I'm just going to jot this up here. So I know that is x minus 2. We're looking for that remaining factor. And here we go. 4x cubed. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put in some little space savers there. Some little space holders. You don't have to do that, but it just sometimes makes it easier. Do you see how I didn't have an x squared term, so I put in a 0? OK, here I go. Wish me luck. x times what is 4x cubed? 4x squared. 
multiply this by both things over here. 4x squared times this, 4x cubed, 4x squared minus 2, minus 8x squared, and I'm going to subtract 0x squared minus a negative. So you see why that 0 was handy, it just helps you keep things lined up. Now I'm going to bring down my next terms. I just bring them all down, you don't have to. x times what is 8x squared? That's going to be an 8x. 8x times x is 8x squared. 8x times negative 2 is negative 16x. I'm going to subtract. That cancels out. Negative 13 minus a negative 16 is a positive 3x. Start again. x times what is 3x? That would be a plus 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And, of course, I get a 0 as my remainder. If you didn't get a 0 as a remainder, what that would mean, I'm tilting the camera so you can see that, what that would mean is that you did something wrong with your long division. Because you know, you know, that x minus 2 is a factor. If x minus 2 is a factor, it's going to divide in evenly. Evenly, meaning with no remainder. Okay, so I found my other factor. Voila. I have now factored this. I wonder if that's factorable. Let's just rewrite this here. And let's set that equal to 0 because I'm looking for roots, of course. Now, if you're not sure if that's factorable, of course, you can use the quadratic formula. You can uh, do completing the square. I'm thinking that might be factorable. I'm just going to go in. I'm going for it. Why don't you guys pause the video and you see if this is factorable. All right, I'm going to start with the 3 and the 1 because I don't have any choices there. Hmm. I don't know. Is this going to be fat? Oh, it's going to work. Do you see it? I see it. Do you see it? What are the possible factors of 4x squared? 4x and x. I'm not seeing much hope there, but I'm thinking I'm seeing hope with 2x and 2x. Do you see what I see? 4x squared plus 2x plus 6x. That gives me my 8x. Oh, who knew? This creature had three rational roots hiding in it all this time. That is so exciting. I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero since they multiply to equal zero. So either x minus 2 equals zero, or 2x plus 3 equals zero, or 2x plus 1 equals zero. You don't have to write that, but I'd like to. So I have 2 as a root. I have x equals negative 3 halves as a root. Huh. I have x equals negative 1 half as a root. Hey, weren't those all on my potential root list? They were. These were all on my potential root list, which of course they had to be, because they were all rational. Now, you're not always going to get all rational roots, of course. I could have gotten a trinomial that ended up with two, uh, two imaginary roots or two irrational roots, right? This just happened to have three rational roots, which is really fun. All right? And just to finish off, let's sketch this. Let's just have a sense of what the sketch is going to look like. I know I'm going to have, let's see, a root at 2 and at negative 1 half and negative 3 halves. It was a cubic, so I know my end behavior is going to look like this, since the leading coefficient was positive. So there's a very loosey-goosey sketch of what f of x would look like. These are fun. Thanks for watching. A man walks down the street, he says, why am I so...